Join us as we take a look at a fantastic Nighthaunt army. Today I am visiting White Metal Games' studio and I have Preston here to tell us about this fantastic looking Night Aunts army. Hey, what's up guys? So I have to admit, I walked in and I was like, wow, these these weren't what I expected. <laughs> yeah, we, we kind of tried to take a little bit of a different approach with these guys here. Um, you're probably used to seeing Night haunts and more of these like spectrally kind of mm -hmm. greens and blues and Su super and shiny green with a with a nilla oxide yeah and like blacks and stuff and so we kind of mm -hmm. wanted to go with like something a bit brighter a bit more like um, warmer colors I mm -hmm. guess so getting away from those uh, more typical like blues and greens and stuff like that and so we kind of have this idea where you know if you look at the night haunt models you see they're wearing these sheets and it kind of reminds us as like you know those old like sheep Halloween costumes, like a ghost with a sheet on it. Scooby-Doo. Yeah, Scooby-Doo style. So, uh, <laughs> we kind of took that inspiration, add a little bit of gore and blood to it. Um, and I think it turned out pretty cool. Um, oh, yeah, I, I like it. It's very, um, it's that flesh, that flesh, uh, what's, the, what's that other... There's another faction in Age of Sigmar. Yeah, like the Flesh Eater Court? Yes, yeah. the Flesh Eater Court. Yeah, I like that. Like that. Maybe these guys hang out together with the Flesh Eater Courts. Like, I mean, obviously. Maybe after the Flesh Eater Courts are done with their dinner, they uh, use the the sheets that these guys wear to, to clean up after themselves. Oh, that's it. There's the table sheets. <laughs> yeah. The uh, haunted table sheets of the Flesh Eater Courts. Yep, absolutely. So, yeah, I really like it. So, what can you, what can you kind of tell us about... Like these color schemes here, like I mean, yeah. So like, if you look at the Night Hunt models themselves, they kind of have like three distinct areas about them. They have um, kind of two areas of their their cloak or their sheet or whatever mm -hmm. you want to call it. They have like the upper part, which is more of the fabric texture, and then they have the lower part, which kind of transitions into this ethereal kind of uh, flowing energy thing. And then they also the third part of the model is their their skin or their flesh or bone or whatever. Right. It is. Um, and those are like the main parts, not talking about like the metals and all the woods and all that stuff. But, um, so we kind of took those three parts of the model and decided, uh, how to kind of break those up using this color scheme. And so we have, uh, the white cloth of the, of the fabric kind of transitioning into this kind of red, uh, thing. We use the glaze through the airbrush to kind of get this nice smooth, uh, -huh. uh transition to that. And then, uh, to contrast against those, uh, stark colors we have the, the blood for the blood god or these blood effects uh, uh paints okay onto here onto their skin and stuff to give you that nice glossy uh bloody look on the on the skin so you have kind of a contrast between like maybe the newer uh still wet blood on the skin and this drier older blood on the cloth itself yeah absolutely it's very it's very shiny too so it's like you've got this kind of whole sort of dynamic between fresh like skin and dried blood and it just it really it looks very very dynamic yeah we got a lot of it's, have a lot of fun doing the different textures on this project because like again we have like the cloth and the blood those are two great contrasting textures where one's very wet and, and kind of slippery the other one's very dry and kind of stark with the cloth and then on top of that we also have like the metals which we can have fun with doing mm -hmm. oxidation effects to kind of add reintroduce some of those cooler colors back in in there to kind of contrast the the kind of bluish greenish oxide color contrasts nicely with the reds in the blood and then uh for the basing on them we decided to go with a nice and dark mm -hmm. kind of base to just really make the models stand out uh apart from their surroundings and so we kind of have a little bit of purples a little bit of blues in the in the bases there just to kind of play off against the models and then their uh their flames like the ethereal flames that are coming off of some of them we done in a purple i see that yeah like this stuff right right in here and things yeah and uh mm -hmm. we wanted to go with the purple because we didn't want to draw too much attention away from the red of the exactly blood and the gore and everything because we really wanted that to be the focal point the centerpiece of the scheme like the blood effects and mm -hmm. everything and so you use some blues back there too on the coach yeah breaking it up a little bit with the blues on there mm -hmm. just throwing in like a couple extra spot colors so it's very cool. Yeah, so this is a really awesome centerpiece model for the army. Oh yeah, I mean without a doubt, you can run like three of these things, which is crazy. Yeah, they're yeah. they're silly powerful. I don't know if you would have to. Though. Yeah, we'll we'll <laughs> talk about some tactics here in a second. But so this is what what level? I know you got like gold. 
Yeah, so uh, we so have uh, <laughs> yeah we have a few different levels in the studio. Um, we have uh, we have a bronze level, which is really just your very standard kind of like base coats and stuff. Mm-hmm. That, that's more designed to hobby for hobbyists that want to like maybe finish off the project themselves and add want want add the details themselves. N- nice base coat. Yeah, nice base coat and everything. <laughs> like it's, it's great for like if you have like two hundred orcs that you don't feel like Oof. or something like that. You know, who would ever want that? Right. Uh, and then we have silver level, which is like our tabletop standard level, and that's mm-hmm. like uh, you know your three color uh, basics, everything. All the major details are highlighted, and everything like that. And then uh, we have electrum level, which uh, these guys are painted too. This is okay. a tabletop plus, and so with this we uh, add some extra effects. We uh, highlight the major details and the minor details. Um, and then on top of that, we have our gold level, which would be our uh, more designed for like characters and centerpiece kind of models in mm-hmm. the collection. Uh, this is where all of the details are highlighted up. Uh, all the way down to the fine details. Uh, we add uh, extra effects, extra attention to detail. And then our final level is the platinum level, where this is kind of like our pro painted level, if you want to say that. Um, and this is kind of like we introduce uh, art theory, such as like color theory, composition, uh, warm and cool tones and colors and everything, really to kind of get the best model that you could possibly want with that particular thing. So, uh, But yeah, these guys are to our Electrum level. So this is a tabletop plus army, and so we've taken the time to make sure all the major details are highlighted nicely. We've got nice smooth transitions, nice effects going on, and all the metals are nice and rusted. Lots of uh, attention oh, to yeah. detail has been paid to all these major areas of the model to really make them stand out on the tabletop. Now let's talk about some fun stuff. <laughs> How do these guys play? Uh, so they're pretty cool. Um, the the Nighthawk army uh, kind of seems like it's a kind of like a control army that's mm-hmm. that's really centered around the characters of the oh, army. Yeah. So we've got them up here for you guys to look at. Um, in this particular army, we have uh, like I guess the black coach is a character, sort of. But uh, if you want to include that, there's like five characters in the army. Um, we have on the left the guy on the flying horse. He's Ragnar the Grim Hailer. Um, he's a wizard and he's really cool. Uh, he's got some awesome abilities to kind of like improve his casting abilities. He, he the candles. Like, yeah, the candles. He can uh, each turn he can blow out a candle, and he can either do a mortal wound to an enemy or to himself. And he does it to himself. He gets uh, plus three to his casting roll, so that's pretty cool. You don't see that a whole lot in no. Sigmar. And then um, we have the little guy there. He's the um, he's the guy that brings back. Uh, yeah, the guardian of souls. Mm-hmm. And so he has the ability to kind of like bring back your normal troops, and so he's super important. Um, you gotta treat when you play these guys. You gotta treat them like Necrons. Keep killing all the the, the yeah, little dudes, or else yeah, they'll totally just keep coming back. The units, or else yep. they'll come back. Yeah, you gotta watch out. For Brutal. That. Um, the black coach. He's uh, he's pretty cool. He kind of like as the game goes on, he uh, gets new and unique mm-hmm. abilities that are pretty cool. And he's uh, pretty quick, and so you can kind of speed around the table and mess your enemy up pretty bad. I, I like he can fall back and then charge back again. Yeah. I think like after cool. turn three. Yeah, with a huge movement like that, he can fly yeah. as well. So you can do all kinds of shenanigans with him. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. And then, uh, of course, there's Lady Owender. She's mm-hmm. kind of the uh, leader of the army. Um, I probably wouldn't leave him without her in a Night Haunts army. She seems pretty crucial. But uh, she's got a lot of really good abilities that can do a lot of damage. Like each turn, she can uh, pull up the, the thing on her face to Ooh. show somebody. And uh, you just roll a dice, and on a one, nothing happens. But on any other number, it does that many mortal wounds to the Scary. enemy. Scary. So that's pretty. It's pretty good. Pretty good. And then uh, finally, there's Curtis Valentian. Is his name, and he's just like an awesome beat stick in combat. He's also a pretty good leader for your troops. Um, he's got uh, five attacks that are three up, three up, minus two rend, d three damage each with that big mace of his. Uh-huh. So he can cause some hurt pretty good. Oof. So these guys basically are unaffected by rend, just army wide. Yeah, you can't improve or uh, or like make worse their mm-hmm. armor save. So they, so they don't. They're not affected by rend, but they're also not affected by like cover or anything like that. Okay. So kind of, so kind of forgiving. You can bring guys back to have a what a feel no pain if they're within a range. Yeah, as of... long as they're within, I think, twelve inches of one of their champions. There, they can. Uh, so they get a six up feel no pain. Um, there's ways nice. to increase that to a five up as well. Um, you can take certain like war scroll battalions and stuff. Mm-hmm. And so there's all kinds of cool ways that you can kind of. Mix these guys up. They have a lot of unit choices, so you can really oh, yeah. have 
cater your army to whatever style of play you like to do. And speaking of uh, War Scroll Battalions, there's what? There's a bunch that you can get. They, this this kind of fills out very easily one of them, right? Yeah, that's something I noticed about this book. Like some of the other books in Age of Sigmar can kind of be hard to sometimes fit in your War Scroll Battalions. Okay. Ask me about my Beast Claws. Yeah, like the Beast Claw is like I have the <laughs> Deep Kitten myself and a lot of times it's hard for me to get a battalion in there. Right. Uh, just meeting the prerequisites for the battalion but these guys um, they've got a lot of battalions in there that are really easy to meet the the minimum requirements like mm -hmm. there's a couple that are just like two units of chain rasps and a character and so like most armies are going to have that in them and so it's going to be a pretty easy choice to get some of these battalions in there mm -hmm. which will then give you more command points give you less drops all that good stuff and so the command points are really cool in this army because oh yeah you can teleport yeah uh, one of the allegiance traits for the army is uh, all of your Heroes get a, an extra command ability, which lets you kind of pick up one of your model, one of your units anywhere from off the board, and mm -hmm. then put it down next to your hero within 12 inches of the hero. Um, and so you can kind of use that to do some pretty cool stuff. Uh, you can either you can even use it with other heroes. So if like one of your heroes is in trouble, you can teleport that guy out to your other hero, save them, catch people off guard, teleporting more troops in where they might not expect it, that kind of stuff. And then what? Two two other things that are super important. They can they can just appear, yeah, and, and then if they like get the, the storm charge cast. Off. Yeah, yeah. Kind of like the storm cast, you can like deep strike the whole army if you want to. Mm -hmm. um, I think in match play, you have to have at least half your army on the board or something like that. But um, and then still counts. Yeah, yeah. On top of that, <laughs> but on top of that, if you do make that ten inch charge, if you roll a ten plus on their charge roll, they get to attack right then, right after they charge, mm -hmm. and that doesn't stop them from attacking again in that following fight phase. And so that's um, that's pretty cool ability. Is if you're rolling hot, you can really cause some damage. Absolutely nice. Well, hey, thanks for uh, thanks for taking the time to show us yeah, man, of course. Uh, these today. Remember, make sure you check out White Metal Games for all your commission needs. Again, this is uh, Electrum level. Spiky bits.